Welcome to the Web3 Podcast. I'm your host, Travis Rosser, and I'm so excited you're here to learn more about Web3 and how it's going to change your business. All right, hey, welcome back to another Web3 show presented by One Mint. Today, I have a new guest, uh, Fernando Segre. Fernando, welcome. Hey, Travis, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm doing good. Fernando is the business development director, and he just knows a lot about the Web3 world and the business world, and I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about GameFi. So, Fernando, how would you define GameFi? Well, uh, I guess the easy way of defining GameFi is uh, the mixture of, of gaming, the gaming industry with the DeFi industry, which basically is decentralized finances. And so nowadays we see a lot of projects that are using uh, the gaming mechanics being powered by, by the blockchain. And this results into many different aspects, which we can go you know, in detail later on, um, but results in, in, in a new mod- modality of, of, of running and developing and building games where users actually can get uh, pay via uh, play to earn. And 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 I'm I'm gonna leave the details, the juicy details for 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 later on. But basically, in other words, it's kind of changing the paradigm of paying to play games, and 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 now basically users are getting paid for 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 playing games. In other words, um, but, awesome. but, but yeah, yeah. I, I went down a whole rabbit hole when I found out this was gonna be our topic. I know we, you guys mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, so I did a little bit of research, and I've seen this because it's happening a lot in the crypto and the Web three world, but. Man, I went deep down the rabbit hole of, of the stuff that's happening, some of the most popular ones. So I'm excited to kind of dive in and talk about this some more because, you know, the video game world just being in technology, I've been around video games. In fact, video games is the thing that first inspired me to start building websites. Way back, I was playing video games and I remember watching like the pixels on my computer and being so ex- like interested in that, that I took a, a screenshot and I zoomed in on the pixels and I was like, this is so cool. And that got me really excited about designing things, which eventually led to web design and and building software and stuff. So I think the video game world is just so interesting to me. And to now to see the people are able to actually make money from, from playing. Why don't we dig into that a little bit? Like, tell me where it's more play to earn versus just pay to play or free to play. What does play to earn even mean? Yeah, I guess uh, a really good way of actually answering that question would be to to step back a little and, and kind of talk about the whole state of Web3, right? And how through gaming, because it's the the, the, the simplest example we can actually talk at the moment, uh, how Web3 and the blockchain technolo- technology is actually impacting the way businesses and companies are building their, their, their models and their strategies. Um, because this whole thing of the change of paradigm uh, starts to take shape when when users participate in the product or service in in a different way, right? So 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 the other the other day you were talking with Greg, right, on, on the episode on on Web three and NFTs and how how these are are affecting right the the art the art that artists promote and get out there. But in regards of gaming, we are seeing that the model and the power that can the blockchain can provide to the table um, allows an ecosystem to be built um, around uh, small niche and small communities where everybody is actually an owner and a part uh, of said company or said product, said game or whatnot, right? So we're talking basically on, 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 on game fi, on, on gaming but it can virtually be applied uh, across any type of business model. Yeah, that, that's something that I thought about too, where it's really where you're getting rewarded for action. And, and we can talk about this later after we talk about games, how this affects other businesses. Like as I was looking through all the top games, one of them is called Steppen, where you can buy these digital sneakers. And then if you go out for a run or a walk, you can then earn tokens within the game, which have value. And that's where I get excited, where it's really where you're getting rewarded for participating. Like you said, you're you're part of building that versus just building something digital that has no value. I think about the amount of time that my kids have spent building worlds in Minecraft um, and, and all the things that they've built for it's cool and it's exciting. And they had that dopamine hit of, wow, I accomplished this. 
but re- you really don't come away with much versus kind of you're almost part of building this world or you're part of of building you know what this is going to become let's let's talk about that like what are some examples of people actually really diving into the game file world what are like what are some of the top games out there that you know of all right, so I, I guess we can start with the most uh, well-known uh, game fi game, blockchain game, which is Axie Infinity. Um, mm-hmm. which actually, uh, I, I guess if whoever's listening to this doesn't know what it is, you can just Google it. It's the first thing that's going to come up. Uh, it actually became a craze. Uh, people went wild into the game, and, and that's how today it has a market caps in, in the millions. Um, and, and the whole deal with this game, why was it a game changer, pun intended? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because we saw the rise of of decentralized economies and decentralized ecosystem being being built in in countries in emerging countries that uh, that have clear geopolitical uh, situations where 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 most mm-hmm. people either live under the 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 standards of you know of the whole world basically right. And, and 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 these games specifically Axie Infinity uh, developed uh, an ecosystem in where in which users were, were able to receive rewards and actually trade those rewards uh, for for other tokens and even fiat currency by by running through exchange and so forth. Now the interesting thing about this is that that in well, I'm from Argentina uh, from Buenos Aires uh, I had the chance and the opportunity of traveling all over the world I've been in in, in countless countless places and, uh, and 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 there is a very big difference in 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 going on and about in in, in first world countries for example as opposed to third world countries where the needs of society are different and mostly conditioned uh, on how they they grow in their in their own economy. So I'm going to put in the example of my country, but this can be also applied in South Southeast Asian uh, countries, Central American countries, South American countries, African countries. Uh, we're talking about places where the, the, the ge- geopolitical situation is actually not well. In fact, after COVID, we started seeing a stagflation type of situation in, in emerging economies. Um, and these these games, even though m- m- most people they, they, when they think about game fire and they say, wait, wait, what? You have to buy an NFT and it gives you token. How do you even capitalize that? How, how do you see the, the, the cash in your hand by playing? You know, the, the, there, there are a lot of questions behind and there's a lot of technicality as well. Um, there's actually a learning curve that you have to go through before actually starting to, you know, mess around with these games. Um, but with this being said, we saw it with Axie Infinity that uh, suddenly there were uh, several not just kids, I'm talking about grown-ups as well, that they saw that if they played enough hours into these games, they would get rewarded uh, an X amount, an X amount of tokens that would be translated into a, a salary at the end of the month that would be much, much higher than any other type of job, whether you're a, a doctor, a lawyer, or or, or, or or you have, I don't know, like a, a, a not-so-professional type of work line, they actually saw uh, an income being generated by playing these games that would beat any other possibility that that they would otherwise have in their in their home countries, right? Um, that's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, it's, so it's they like, literally would make more money than doing their job, let's say, and so they just dove in and started earning money playing these games virtually. Yeah, that's, that's so awesome. So a whole economy is born. That's the crazy thing. I know. What now? How are they? Let's say Axiom Infinity. Is it a mobile game mostly? Is it played through the computer? Like, I, I know, like Axiom, you have to own the certain NFTs to even play the game. Correct? Is that is that how? It yeah. Works? You, you, in most games, you probably need a, a base character. In in most known games, these base characters usually are quite cost costly. Um, it, it has quite a high barrier of entry. However, uh, talking about econo- economics, right? Um, mm-hmm. there, there, there was this type of leasing mechanism that came up in where maybe there, there, would, there would be an investor who would come in and just buy into the game's characters and they would actually lease it out to other people to have it, to have them work 
the game and actually play the game for them. And in return, they, they, they would pay them a salary or, or a percentage for their, their time and effort. You know, uh, it, it's crazy because it's, it's basically what we do in real life on the web yeah. to of ecosystem, but now being reflected in the, in the blockchain space. This is crazy. So they literally, it, it created its own like ecosystem of, or its own economy where there was jobs within the game. Like exactly. how, how, how were they even managing that? They were just like connecting through like mobile or lo locally where they talking about like, Hey, I want to hire you to go click on this thing for me to make more and I'll lease you this. Like you, you won't crazy. believe it. Yeah, uh, uh, since I, I know I know how you like going in, uh, into the rabbit hole. If you go into yes, the I, I hole, do, I go hard. deep in the rabbit hole. Yes, <laughs> you're gonna find there are so many sub niches and and sub uh, and, and and small marketplaces, even on Reddit or, or social media platforms, where people would actually just post until they find the right candidate and actually do a, a, a recruiting uh, strategy to, to, to see if they were fit for the job and so forth. It's, it's actually, I mean, it sounds crazy because we're always talking about NFTs, blockchain, and, and society has kind of a um, a very particular way of looking at it. If a mm -hmm. person is not from the blockchain ecosystem, I know there are some doubts that come up. Uh, but, but having this game become more mainstream as, as the weeks and the months go by is a clear example that we are starting to see a migration of, of technology. And, and more importantly, we're seeing users and people starting to use the blockchain technology to, to even generate jobs. And, and over yeah. here, we can go even further in and talk about the metaverse and how that that's also created an economy, right? But I'll, sure. I'll leave you uh, uh, to, to, to show the North. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because it created like an entire workforce. Like I'm excited to see what other things develop from this to where that action could actually do something that was not just a virtual digital, you know, pet, which is kind of what Axiom are. They're like little pets, but imagine if someone actually had this to where that action did something good, whatever it could be. I have no idea, but with this technology, there's some exciting things that could happen, you know? <laughs> I, I was doing some research, right? Uh, on my free time, I just love just, you know, learning new stuff, especially in the blockchain uh, industry mm -hmm. that has an endless amount of opportunities. And, 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 and the ground is just so fertile currently that, that if you plant a seed, it's going to grow. Um, right now, I, I like to call it the state of, of Web3, right? Uh, the, the current situation that Web3 is, going, uh, is living at the moment. And the other day, I was reading that in China, for example, um, the government has placed several blockchain-backed systems uh, in where, uh, uh, let's take the supply chain, for example, the production of goods. Uh, most of today's goods are made in China. Like It's a reality, right? Mm -hmm. So they started to implement a blockchain uh, system in where they can track via the blockchain every single product and 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 and, and why, why why is this important, right? Because if we think about Web two, we're thinking about databases. We're talking we're talking about backends that can be easily uh, altered. Basically, um, you might get an error, you might get a duplicate line, and it might mess up the whole system. Whereas um, the blockchain technology kind of helps um, solve that scalability issue, right? And we're not just talking about supply chain; we're also talking about labs. They're even doing um, they're using the blockchain uh, as a means of, uh, of studying. It's called not DeFi or GameFi, but D-Science. Uh, they're actually implementing data science with blockchain uh, mechanisms and, and, and then putting that together with biology. And then they started to, 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 to test with DNA records and using the blockchain to kind of, uh, you know, like track the, the would-be uh, of the ribonucleic acid, for example, talking about biology here. Um, sure. You can, you can tell that basically the blockchain is, is just a, an endless amount of, it has an endless amount of room for growth and, and implementations, right? Um, and you can see with, with this technology and this type of mindset and strategy uh, when implementing and creating uh, funnels in, in a business, um, that, that, that it is... Today, it is very simple and very easy to create an ecosystem in which users can be part of the project. In, in, in the case of a GameFi project, they would be part and owners of a part of the project 
whereas we are we have been for the past 10 to 15 years in the evolution of the web 2 we've been kind of uh we've been the product because our data was always and has always been owned by the big companies you That's can call right. it facebook google whatever you know like the big the big uh corporations and 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 now having this technology being implemented into into different um um business lines um we see how users can actually make a change they can either have a, a voting power they 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 can turn virtual goods into actually actual physical uh tangible uh capital in, in other words right so 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 yeah it's quite it's quite an exciting time to to be in to be honest it it is so exciting because i've seen all this stuff happen in the past like a long time ago when uh world of warcraft came out and it was that you know the massive multiplayer game you could there was people that are actually selling the gold that you could mine within the game and there was individuals in other countries that actually mine that and then they were selling it and it's so crazy to see this come to a whole nother level the other thing i think about is years ago this is in the early 2000s i remember there was a developer at a company i worked at that had his computer set to this network and the computer was helping map part of space and and i'm like this is so strange like all this data was going to computers like yeah there's a satellite that's like mapping it and i'm allowing part of my computer to be used and and, and now here we are with the blockchain and all these other things and now GameFi. and i can see how that stuff that happened 20 years ago with things of how we could do that now i mean imagine a game that was part of how did what did you call the science thing what was it called uh, the, this this science this, the centralized science the, the, uh, should be like D sci, like sci fi. Yeah, yeah, like that, I like yeah. that better. Yeah, D sci. Yeah, that's probably better. Maybe we just coined that right now. This is where they, people can trace back where the D sci came from. But imagine if there was data that was like, let's say that they were scanning new like microorganisms and it was all this data that had to visually be gone through. And then someone could build a game around going through that data and actually marking it correctly. Or you could really. I hate to use the word gamify, but it is gamify in a way, which, you know, when I did research, some people called gamify gamify, which it kind of is, but it's more about the financial component, but really gamification is the other thing that I think people are excited about when it comes to business, where we're tracking, you know, people's actions and we're trying to get them to get that dopamine hit. And a lot of games actually focus on trying to make them addicting, but I could see a future where we could, take tasks that need to be accomplished and add gamification on top of it where it has that dopamine hit and that excitement and then and then the financial reward on top of it you could create an entire workforce that's solving some problem in science or or developing something new by creating a game around action and i know that this is the rabbit hole i always do this i always go down these random rabbit holes because i love thinking beyond whatever we're talking about but i could see that happen to where games could become ways of solving some of the world's problems in a way, you know? So like, it's funny that you mentioned the whole dopamine hit and and, and the gamification uh, of things, right? Because uh, earlier today, uh, I had a call with this guy. He's he's the owner of a very important uh, media group. Um, uh, and they basically uh, need a solution for, for their upcoming uh, project, right? Uh, I, I can't really say much, obviously, right? Uh, but but in, in in very few words, um, what they want to do is create. It's with their own audience and their own community that they already have. They want to 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 do a gamification of 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 a certain process in which they're gonna ask users to participate in their ecosystem. Uh, and just by participating, they will be getting rewards and so forth. So uh, on a business point of view, for example, like uh, if we are aiming towards not just people and users, uh, but, but but companies and, and, and agents, projects and so forth, um, I think one of the most crucial and fundamental goals is to create a product and service that can be used over and over by users um with proper you know like a follow up and a, and a client service and so forth but the fact of having users kind of really digging into the tool service product or whatnot and giving those users a part of the share or 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 a part of the decision of 
the power of decision over a project that actually is a game changer. Um, so far, we can we could we could say that users have been on Web two uh, spectators, and now with Web three, we're opening the doors for users to become active actors. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I th I think it's too we were the product. You know, our data, our action, us being on the site was the product, and mm -hmm. now I think we are becoming more of the owners instead of just the big companies being the owners we become the owners i think that's why axiom during kind of the covid shutdown started to come come to life because people realized they could become owners of their time and and get value from that versus just being on the internet and by clicking and viewing and you know they're the product i think we become the owners and that is interesting where as you interact with a product, you know, especially a digital product, my background in software, you know, my users are everything. Happy users in a software, an online, you know, SaaS is is everything. And if you could reward them more for that interaction, like using the app more, you know, giving feedback more, um, you know, reporting bugs, there's so many ways you could gamify your customer loyalty is really, and I have that in my notes. Like I could see this being huge for customer loyalty. To where every time a customer visits your site or buys a product from you or goes into your your store, you know you could continue to to gamify that and put real game fi behind it, where there's real financial gain for that action. I believe Starbucks is actually um, doing a customer loyalty program backed by blockchain, in which yeah. uh, I, I, I believe is still under development. Um, but the whole idea is to reward users with NFTs when when they go and purchase their coffee, and 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 automatically that that's going to give you some sort of reward that can be uh, changed and, and maybe traded for another coffee or some gift or or whatever, right? Um, but 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 it's really 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 interesting the fact that users are now owners, right? Uh, mm -hmm. of a portion. Now it, it might sound like an understatement, but well, you come from the technological background, right? I used to work in ad tech uh, before. Uh, and, 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 and the true thing about technology is that nobody cares about technology. Like users don't care about technology. No, they don't care what the all. back end is nope. like. They, no, they don't. They just want the experience, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, That's right. The yeah. benefits. The, the benefits. benefits the, the, yeah, the experience, the, uh, the freedom. The the freedom. Ease. There's so many things that technology gives us, but we really don't care. Like I have so many questions I want to ask you, but it's so like in the weeds, but you know, people don't care about that. They care about how is this going to change my, my life? How's this going to make my life better, more enjoyable, you know, whatever, whatever it is, or maybe escape whatever stress I have in my life. I know video games gives that to a lot of people. It, it's an escape from reality, you yeah. know, and we kind of started talking about metaverse. Like, I think that's some of the hope of what metaverse is. It's kind of the whole, it's ready player one, I think is the game where he keeps going back inside the game. Great, great, great game. How do you see gamify and the metaverse? Like, and is there, is there gamify games in the metaverse? I didn't find that in my rabbit hole. I just didn't go down that, that direction. <laughs> Yeah, so so it's a very very good question, and actually quite the tricky one because we are entering in the realm of the metaverse. So, what is the metaverse? Actually, the metaverse is not what people think because it still is not quite something. If you think about it, the mm -hmm. metaverse is just the concept of creating a virtual reality in which people can 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 enter into the into the ecosystem via the blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. This concept already existed before. I mean, there, there, there are games out there that, that offers uh, the, uh, virtual reality, right? You, uh, you can call it, I don't know, GTA, uh, the online version or, or Second Life. Mm -hmm. Second um, Life, of course. I remember Second Life. Everybody thought that was going to be the thing. Second right. Life is exactly what the metaverse is now, but it was 10 yeah. years ago or however long ago. Um, yeah. And everybody thought this is it. You know, this is how people had lives. People had relationships in Second Life. People bought real estate in Second Life. But it was it was also a closed system. And right now, I mean, the metaverse really, where else can you go unless you go into the Oculus Facebook metaverse? I mean, is there other metaverse experience? I guess there are plenty of games that are going for that same thing. But 
Yeah, the, the, the first thing I'm going to address, though, is, is the fact that you mentioned Facebook, right, Meta? um which yeah. i don't want to go into details right but 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 it's yeah. funny how, how they came uh with the new branding and, and try to you know like uh fit themselves in into a new industry after they were having uh months if not years of, of legal trouble and turmoil right yes um yes. They, they, they are actually uh doing quite a lot of development and it's quite promising what what they they, they wish to accomplish uh however it, it kind of I don't know. I have some 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 thoughts about this point in specific because it having Facebook such a centralized organization and such a powerful organization at that being the 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 the, the number one runner up into into the metaverse uh, ecosystem kind of beats the point, right? Because the decentralization of things implies that yeah. that, that the power and, and and equity is spread across uh, several entities and not just one, right? Um, but going going back to the actually the metaverse and, and the versions out there, there are actually a couple of metaverses um, that are currently live and working and with a with a flourishing ecosystem such as Decentraland uh, or Upland and 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 these basically virtual worlds uh, have built during the past three to four years, may I say, as an average, um, their user base. And I remember, for example, on Decentraland, that is, if not the most uh, important uh, metaverse, or at least one of them. Um, I believe I, I, I don't remember, I don't recall exactly, but a piece of land inside of that virtual world would probably cost about anywhere from a hundred to five hundred dollars. And now we're seeing pieces of land being sold in the thousands. Oh, now. Yeah. I'm not saying go out there and buy your piece of virtual land, right? Uh, what I'm saying, though, is that the user base and the amount of traction that this uh, virtual reality with, with with gaming involved, because it has some gamification aspect to it, uh, the second life, right? It was kind of like a game. Yeah. Um, you, you can see you can see how, how with this uh, growth of users, uh, the, the the economy and the ecosystem that is built is striving and is on, on a continuous growth and 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 the fun thing starts when and that's actually the part that I actually enjoy the most. Uh, the fun thing starts when you start mixing the technological side of things, the cloud side of things, the blockchain side, with, with the actual real world. So uh, I believe uh, big brands such as Samsung and, and a couple more already opened their own stores inside of this uh, metaverse. And you can actually go in there and interact. And on the other end, there is actually a real person in a virtual world. Now, many people find it quite obscure uh, having a virtual reality. And I'm not going to lie, on, on on a first basis, I, I thought so too as well. I was kind of sketchy about it. You know, like I, it was kind of weird. Uh, but if you think about it right now, you, 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 you're up north in America, I'm down south, and, and we're actually talking via camera. And this is virtual reality. This is virtual, reality I know. Business, right? That's right. Uh, I, I guess it's just a matter of, of time and and ma mainstream adaption adoption of the technology until um, people going into the metaverse is more of a natural thing than than uh, you know you have to think it twice before going in and and and, and well and it's like who can you trust like I think about not too long ago Facebook was quote unquote the bad guy in the Web two world because they they owned our data. They made a lot of money off of us, and now they're asking us to trust them in this new metaverse, which means we're even more immersed into their world that they control. I think they they may have to do a shift by adding the stuff we're talking about. Imagine if they use more, you know, a reward by action, ownership of your own thing. I think Facebook could become a player if they made that pivot and added more GameFi type stuff and. Every time I took an action, every time I did something, I was reward, rewarded either financially or more of something inside the metaverse. That might work. And I'm surprised they're not going that route. They're just going like, we are Facebook. We're moving into this space, you know, as the big giant. But these other things are incredible, like the decentral land. The other one is Sandbox. I mean, I th those things are growing massively. I think it's is Decentraland the one where Snoop Snoop Dogg went in and bought like a big thing and had like a virtual concert or 
it was one of those things where it was huge and the value of like the virtual land is is crazy i mean not, not just the land but the neighbors like the the the, the adjacent uh, land lots they started to to everybody wanted to be snoop dogs virtual neighbor oh yeah to- all of a sudden it has value the same as regular real estate value you know like they always say the three rules in 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 real estate is location 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 and all of a sudden virtual location meant something too. And I, I think that's where it gets even more exciting. But then again, there's all this FOMO. There's so much FOMO around. I better buy land in this. I better buy land in that. Um, that's interesting. I wonder if, if meta Facebook, whatever you want to call them, if they're going to go that same route where you could actually start to buy your part of the metaverse, who knows? That would be interesting. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I, I'm a bit skeptical about Facebook's way of handling. I mean, it, 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 obviously, it's a mega corporation, right? Mm-hmm. But I think the, the whole beauty yeah, of of the blockchain and the Web three space is that, in fact, it kind of gives back power to the actual creators, users, and so forth, uh, and the actual mechanism behind uh, that that is actually powering um, the whole ecosystem. Is 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 a machine, or in this case, a lot of machines with the same copy, uh, right? Uh, but yeah. not a person that has power of decision over your data, which is yeah. something really important. And, and I want to go back to the to the game five with this thought, because owning your data, it's it's such a big deal that people still do not kind of grasp the the importance of it because the, the, what we were saying earlier right they don't care about the back end they don't care about anything they just care about the functionality and what they what it provides to them but being owner of your data it's it, it implies so many things that we, we, we would have to stay here during hours right but, but it could be as simple as saying that the number that you see on your home banking account actually is not your money it's just a number in a system representing a balance but it's not really yours you can't just go there and take it uh, Whereas, right. uh, like, for example, um, here in, in, in Latin American countries, um, unfortunately, we have a lot of geopolitical issues, right? Uh, so, so, so as the days and the weeks and the months go by, there's always an eventuality. Um, these are not societies that usually, you know, uh, are streamlined and, and have a, uh, an, a, a very clear north and path that society takes it actually is kind of like a day-to-day type of war uh where you're fighting not just just with yourself but with the the whole society and trying to you know survive and um and 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 being owner of the data in this case uh opens up the doors for for not just the gamification but just the decentralization of services and products that at the end of the day makes life easier um, I'm going to give you an example. For example, in my home country, in Argentina, uh, there is a limitation for the amount of currency you can buy at the bank. Uh, I'm not talking about the national currency, but for example, if you were, as an Argentinian citizen, um, you were decided to invest into, into dollars, US dollars, just for having a more secure, uh, you know, a more secure saving account or a more secure way of saving your capital, uh, you can only buy up to two hundred dollars per month of, of you know with with our wow. national currency. And what cryptocurrencies and the decentralized web has allowed is that users can bypass that um, you know that that that, that boycott that uh, I don't want to get into politics, right? But sure. but, but but we are already seeing how this the, this technology is actually helping users in places where. Maybe they, they might be forgotten by their government. You, we see this being applied in, in, in emerging countries uh, more so. Uh, was it Singapore, was it, or Malaysia? I don't recall, but I, I remember speaking once to this guy. He just finished uh, his, high, his high school, and we were talking with a bunch of friends, and then we, went, we jumped on a call. Some of the guys were over at Australia. And, and, and this kid, 18 year old, uh, came up into the call and started talking about uh, Axie Infinity, right? The, the, this, this, this game, which is kind of like Pokemon, in other words, uh, but yeah. creepy version. And, 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 and the kid was absolutely 
amazed on how his life changed in 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 what in in a four months time in a five months time he 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 went from earning below the line of poverty basically into actually being able to travel around the world and and looking for new opportunities elsewhere something that otherwise it would have been impossible impossible completely impossible yeah say what sorry no i i just agree with you it would have been impossible before this yeah completely because in order to to maybe have this jump in in lifestyle whether that is in your personal lifestyle or or in your professional lifestyle in your work line you you kind of have to to take a step right and usually you have to, to to risk uh you you name it you can risk money you can risk time energy whatnot uh but if you do not have the ability or the the the, the capital or, or for for making that jump it's always much harder so now we see all of these kids that that do not have any experience whatsoever uh for joining a traditional type of work line and they see an opportunity in in through the blockchain right and the web3 ecosystem of actually uh, progressing in life and, and and growing right and yeah it it's created this um almost like a global company where you know i think about in technology because of zoom and because of broadband and, and internet connection you and i are able to work together you know i've been able to hire developers from all over the world but then you've got other people that don't have that skill or that connection. And these type of games create the same global like company or the same global economy. And it's fascinating to see how it changes someone's life because they were able to take a chance on this game and invest their time and get rewarded. I mean, it's, it's huge how much that, that, that shifted people's lives. I love those kind of stories where, you know, they were able to make more money than they could at their normal job or some kid just made a jump and all of a sudden his whole life changes. I mean, that, that's kind of why I'm in business because I love how much business has changed my family's lives and I love building a business that changes other people's lives. And it's exciting. Like it makes me want to go out and build some kind of game right now. Like I want to go build some like lemonade stand, a gamify game where you, you, know, you spend time and you build it and it turns into something big. Um, yeah. It's it's so so incredible. What do you think is like the next thing in GameFi? Like, especially with the stuff you guys are doing over at One Mint. I know you're doing a lot of this dynamic, you know, NFT and in the marketplace. Like, what do you think is going to happen next? Yeah, so uh, it's good that you mentioned that because we were actually uh, thinking how how we could improve um, the current rules that there are set uh, on the GameFi industry, right? Uh, and this this might be more on the technical side of things. What I'm about I'm about to say, right? But um, up till now, um, on on the technical side of things, users, in order to be able to play the DeFi games, um, they must mint their their own NFT, right? Their own character in order to participate in a game. First, you need a, a player, right? Your, your own little Pokemon or avatar or, you know, fighter, if it's a fight game or, or even horse, there are some horse games, horse racing games out there. The man, there, there's so many things out there. It's, yep. it's just crazy. It's like a revolution right now going on. Um, but uh, what, 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 we're, what we were seeing is that the technology that was being implemented was very, uh, stiff, I want to say, but very unmutable. Um, I mean, obviously, if we're talking about NFTs, we're talking about immuni- immutability, right? But when we're talking about scaling projects, scaling the game and, and making it more dynamic and more immersive, um, these types of uh, of rules in on, on the programming side of things usually might be um, a breaking a break into the development and, and the whole user experience inside of a game. So that's when we started to thinking, how can we make it better? And that's how we came up with the dynamic NFT solution that we're launching, um, which basically implies that even though you are minting uh, uh, an NFT and by itself an NFT is immutable, we were able to use uh, a, a different type of logic in the smart contracts. And, and the base NFT that you now own 
can be modified and personalized uh, with custom traits, custom add-ons. Uh, let's just say that you, 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 the game it's about it's it's a, it's a fight game, for example, right? And you got your you, you got your character that that is your main character. You meet him, but you saw that uh, if you add maybe a, a power wrist or 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 a special backpack or some very impressive looking sneakers with special abilities that make you run faster or whatever you, you, you there goes the storytelling side of things right that's a separate story um we were able to to mutate the immutable so uh, the nfts are still going to be the nfts but we were able to 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 kind of connect the base nft with upgradable traits and add-ons right so for the for the game fi industry this is actually huge This is huge in so many ways because now we are able to add dynamism to the actual uh, assets that are being used in the in the game, right? And, and when I talk about asset, maybe a game developer will know best how to answer this question, right? Usually in game, game development, assets can be either the main character or a rock or a wall, right? Now, since the blockchain, um, I like to, to take a look at the blockchain as technology. Uh, more than anything else um, and technology wise um, having this dynamism in the NFT world actually will change the rules uh, completely completely yeah it's incredible because what you guys are allowing is you know you could have that base character within the game and then as you earn more things the new components could be added to that NFT or you purchase things can be added to it which I think is incredible because then that gives you even more of that ownership component. I think about the amount of time, like I was saying that my kids played Minecraft or Fortnite or uh, destiny, the other game where they're spending hours and hours and they're upgrading their characters. And this character has value, but there's nothing you can do with it. You can't like pull it off of there and then put it into a marketplace and sell it. Sure. You might be able to sell your account. And I know people have always found ways to sell things within games, yeah. but What you guys are doing allows that ownership to then be tied back to the blockchain and the ownership can then be potentially transferred to someone else or sold. And I think that opens up so many other possibilities for, for gaming developers, for business developers too. I think I always start thinking of all the other ways. Like I was saying before, I could easily go into loyalty to where, like you're saying, Starbucks with an NFT or you know, every time that you open up your iPhone and you shopped at a certain place, then that NFT could then be modified. Like there's so many ways that I think this could open uh, new businesses and new opportunities. So very, very exciting stuff. What, what else, what else you want to talk about in the gamify world that I didn't, I didn't hit, or maybe we, uh, you want to go back to before we start to wrap this up. Oh, I mean, I, I think we, we we pretty much covered the, the the introduction aspect of it, right? Because if we were to you know kind of like uh, run down through every single game by game that there is uh, at the moment, we would have a lot a lot of cloth to cut, man. Because there are so many ideas and and, and people are so creative in so many ways. Um, well, my specialty is not gaming, right? But 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 I'm working closely right now um, with this new dynamic NFT that we're launching. Uh, into developing and, and and kind of position this technology in the game five world, right? Um, and, and and if you already see that people are getting creative with what there is, imagine when we bring out all these tools that 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 make life easier. Like I, I was talking to 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 a customer the other day, right? And they said, "Man, the, your platform is amazing. It makes life so much simpler." And, and and it's true. I think at the end of the, the the day, what we aim and what we strive is to kind of like bring solutions uh, to the table, right? And and I'm saying this because all of this game fi, if you start to go through the smart contract, you see how creative like uh, these developers get. Um, now, when we talk about gaming as a business and 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 having a game and and being able to scale it. Uh, you know, and, and being able to support uh, X amount of users, um, th there are a lot of things that, uh, that that are that must be taken into consideration in regards to the back end of things. Um, and, and in this case, having a, a tool that that just makes the process easy 
I think it's going to be the the before and after of the gaming industry, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, it's funny you, you were saying you were saying that this the, the, these people, these kids, just reselling and finding the way to profit out of the uh, of right. the, the, the Fortnite <laughs> accounts. I, I have a little brother, and, uh, and and you know he also plays Fortnite and stuff, and and sometimes he's around with all of his friends, and and they're all playing, being you know like gamers and stuff. Uh, and and one of the kids actually uh, uh, sold uh, one of his accounts. Obviously, he only wanted to sell it because uh, he wanted money for the weekend. I don't know for for going <laughs> to party or something, right? Sure. Um, but 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 that takes a lot of ingenuity and a lot of creativity, uh, especially for for early age, uh, you know, professionals and people out there. Uh, but the normal everyday person that maybe might have it a bit harder to think outside of the box if you present them with with a with a solution um with a simple way of handling and, and operating with the blockchain um i think we're going to see a lot of of uh, of growth in that aspect um at yeah. one May, for example we're going to be opening a, a trades and add-on marketplace so you can imagine all that it implies not just for the marketplace itself but actually for building new economies on top of uh, of you know of the different projects that are going out there, yeah. And I, I, what I love is you guys are like you said, you guys are removing the technology barrier because coding this yourself or hiring a programmer to build your smart contracts would be massively expensive, very distracting, and you wouldn't be able to focus on whatever you're good at. So when you have a tool like this that opens all these possibilities, and all you need to do is focus either on your business or building your game or this vision or this dream you have, we have no idea what's next. It's all I know is it's going to be exciting and there's going to be a lot of cool things uh, to continue to talk about and check out. So yeah. awesome. Fernandos, thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks to you, Travis. Always <laughs> delightful speaking to you. Awesome. How do they find you? Like, how does someone get a hold of you? I mean, you're the director of business development. So if they want to do business with you guys, you're definitely the guy to go to. What's the best way to find you? Yeah. You can find me on LinkedIn as Fernando Segre. Also, you can send me an email at fernando.segre at onemint.io. Uh, or you can just join our Discord server and just uh, send me a message. I'll be glad to, to speak with, with everybody. I think in the end, it's just a matter of building relationships. And, and, and that's how an ecosystem can flourish. Awesome. Thanks again. Uh, this has been really cool. And thank you for everybody watching this episode or listening to it. Make sure you come back. We're going to talk about other cool things in the Web3 space. We'll see you next time. This episode of the Web3 show is brought to you by OneMint. Make sure you visit onemint.io to see all the amazing technology they're developing.